Oh, hi, my name is Raquel. In order to buy or sell, you have to have the money, the base, on your mind or in your hand. It's one of those words they don't translate correctly. And I've finally got the a Wikipedia article edited on the, on the mark of the beast. It's actually the number of the beast. But if you Google Mark the Beast Wikipedia, it'll come up and you can see that the um, word karagma means uh, money. That's what it really means here in the unabridged Greek-English lexicon. The word karagma means the impress on the coin or stamped money coin. And I also got the Wikipedia article on mammon. Um, change to, I showed the etymology, how it uh, really means money. It's in the uh, book of Luke in the New Testament. So I'm trying to get these Christians to realize, see the whole context of this thing. Uh, he says that the Pharisees who loved money heard all this and scoffed, and that's in uh, Luke 16. But uh, yeah, the word mammon, it's an Aramaic word that means money, and it's also a Hebrew word for money. The mammon is a Hebrew word for money, and I put that up on the Wikipedia. And the, the Number of the Beast article is a pretty popular one. It gets like, I think, 9,000 views a day. So these people will wise up and learn what the mark of the beast really is. It's not an implant in your hand or or anything like that. It's money. And the Jews revolted in 66 AD. I've been telling you this. And I put it up there in uh, the Wikipedia article under the Mammon um, article that the Jews revolted in 66 and started coining their own money. And the Book of Revelations was written around that time. And um, Nero was the emperor and uh, had his picture on all the money. So the 666, if you take the Hebrew letters, uh, if you um, f each letter in Hebrew has a, a n numeric value, just like the Roman numerals, V equals 5 and X equals 10, well, the Hebrews had the same kind of thing. So if you take the Hebrew letters for the name of Nero Caesar, it'll spell 666 and... So those two things are important for Christians to realize. You know, Jesus was a radical, and he upset the tables of the money changers when he went into Jerusalem. It was the first thing he did. And he told his disciples to go forth without money in their purses. And um, he also said to render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's. And he, Jesus even mentioned, the, he asked uh, the people what, whose picture is on the money and they said well it's Caesar's and um, so uh, Jesus uh, had a lot to say about money and the problem with the church today is or with these Christians is they mostly talk about what St. Paul says and um, I don't believe that St. Paul was what he, I don't believe he was any kind of a saint you know he wasn't he wasn't inspired by God, you know, God is the logos or logic, and that's another um, thing that they don't translate correctly. In, in the book of John, in one one, it's, um, in the beginning was the logos, and, and it's rarely the word, but uh, it really means logic, you know, if it's not logical, then it's not of God. And the devil is a slanderer. If you look up the etymology, the word devil comes from a Greek word for diabolos, which means to slander or falsely accuse. And so if you lie about somebody, and like um, our government has been doing, you know, they lied about Muammar Gaddafi, and Gaddafi was one of those people who believed in eliminating money. And um, so is Castro, Fidel Castro in Cuba. And they're always trying to make Cuba look like it's some kind of a hellhole or something. But uh, if you look at just about any of the other Latin American countries, or if you compare Cuba to Puerto Rico, you'd see a vast um, difference in the culture and everything else, the education, and they're pretty well integrated, too. They, they have um, 
quite a percentage of black people there and um, a lot of culture and music. I've always wanted to go there. Well, anyway, I quit smoking and uh, I'll tell you how I did that. I've been trying to wean myself off this non-filtered American spirits that, you know, I'd roll them. I have a rolling machine and I'd roll them into these non-filtered cigarettes. And um, so like on vacation, I was getting sick all the time and and um, it was a psychological sickness, but it was tied to the cigarettes and it was anxiety, panic attacks and stuff because I kept thinking I was dying, you know, this damn tobacco. It made me dizzy and, and made my heart beat funny and so I hated smoking and I was really, tr I tried to quit so many times with the n nicotine pills and things like that, but I just never could do it. And so like on this vacation, my blood pressure was getting really high and I could feel it. You know, I can tell my blood pressure's high because it makes you feel kind of sick and panicky and scared. And so um, I checked into a hospital there. It was like 160 over 90, but um, I just, um, there was nothing they could really do about it. You know, tranquilizers help, but I didn't have any. So anyway, the whole vacation I was like, a couple times I thought I was going to die because uh, you know, panic attacks and all that stuff. And so I find, I get back home and and uh, I was down to like two cigarettes a day. So I had some friends over and we smoked some pretty good weed and, and I drank like 10 ounces of wine. But the wine wasn't really a problem. So, you know, I'm feeling pretty good and I take two deep drags off of one of these non-filtered American spirit roll-your-own cigarettes. But I used the machine so it was just like a camel cigarette or something. And um, that two deep drags just caused me to, I felt kind of sick and dizzy. And I stood up and I, I thought I was dying. I actually thought I was dying and I had this hot flash. But it's not like the kind you get from menopause. It's just, it was like I thought I was burning up and I wanted to run into the shower to cool off. But I never made it and I ended up passing out. And so um, I passed out again as I was trying to get outside to use the garden hose because I didn't make it in the shower. And um, so that time after I passed out, I threw up. But So I thought that, but after I threw up, I started feeling better again. And and so I was didn't really know it caused me to pass out. I thought it was um, food poisoning, you know, and so I just went to bed and, and didn't think about it until the next day. I... I uh, I uh, thought it might have been the tobacco, so I was looking on the internet about um, passing out. They have a scientific word for it. It's called syncope, syncopal episodes associated with smoking. And I found a couple scientific articles that um, just they say it's very rare that that a smoker will pass out from from uh, tobacco. But there's one article there. And then I found another one here about it. You can find it by looking it up on the internet. But um, what happened was I think that like the tobacco, it constricts your blood. And um, when I passed out, it wasn't I wasn't hyperventilating. It was uh, just a constriction of my blood into my brain. But I really thought I was dying, and so. Uh, after that, I, I just didn't want to smoke at all because, you know, I didn't want to pass out again. So it's been like two weeks now since I've had a cigarette. But, you know, it uh, makes you kind of think about, you know, your sentient being here, you breathing air, and you wonder how much more you can, can breathe. So, you know, I just kind of, you know, it makes you... I've been running and trying to get my health back again. And you really notice, like, I was, I hated smoking. It made me feel sick and I had all this mucus in my, in your, you know, just... So I smoked for maybe four years, but before that I was, like, really athletic and I'd run four miles a day and go on these hikes to the top of Micah Mountain. You go to the end of Speedway and <clears throat> go up there. It was like um, 24 miles round trip, so I was pretty healthy to do that in just one day. I'd get up pretty early. Well, 
I guess uh, what I've, I never really know what I'm going to talk about here. And, and so I just, like I was kind of thinking about, you know, my mortality, you know, and, and uh, you know, and I found out about the Kennedy assassination and, and all these other big lies about the Holocaust and everything. I thought that people would, would you know, understand this and, and 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 you know I wrote this this paper here you know look see you know to try to wake people up about uh, eliminating money and the Kennedy assassination and well I had the mark of the beast up here it's the number one I made these in 1985 and uh, it's like 27 years ago this gospel of eliminating money and you can find these up on my website. And these are quotations from famous people who believed in eliminating money. You know, Karl Marx believed in eliminating money. And uh, very few of these <clears throat> communists talk about it. And uh, Nikolai Bukharin, who was a protege of Lenin and the editor of Asbestia, wrote a book called The ABCs of Communism. And he talked about money becoming a, th a thing of the past. Friedrich Engels talked, you know, when there's an abundance of everything. There's no need to divvy and hoard. It's like, um, you know, with modern machinery, they, they thought that there would, these, the communists thought that there would be an abundance. And um, Bertland Russell wrote about, he was an anarchist and he was a famous mathematician. And so, like, it just makes sense that when they're, you know, modern machinery was supposed to make life easier for us. You know, it used to be you'd have to have a bunch of horses to harvest the corn, and now we have a tractor that can plow thousands of acres, you know, and there's very few people on the farms anymore. So, you know, just like in the past 150 years, we've had the ability to produce so much food that people could do other things that were creative, you know, and but we've got so many uncreative jobs. We've got bankers, bookkeepers, accountants, salesmen, sales clerks, and all these people who aren't really producing anything. And and uh, <clears throat> we've got these dumb religions. I think the dumbest religion is this Islamic religion. You know, that, um, that video they made that allegedly started that riot in, um, in uh, Libya on 9-11, that that was a pretty truthful movie. It was really funny, actually. I mean, it was comical, the acting in there. And um, the first scene was this Coptic um, um, Egyptian man who was being persecuted by the Egyptian government. And so these Coptic Christians were trying to expose how retarded and stupid this Islamic religion is. And everything in there was basically the truth. There's there's kind of a controversy on the, the Wikipedia in the talk pages on this movie. It was called The Innocence of Muslims. And uh, so uh, they have an article on there, and they're trying to decide, you know, I mean, this movie was truthful, so uh, is, is, is it anti-Islamic? If you're telling the truth about Islam, is, it, is that, I mean, is, is that anti-Islamic? Uh, I mean, a lot of people point out some of the ridiculous things in the Bible, and are they anti-Christian? Well, I was telling you that uh, St. Paul is illogical, and so, and, you know, Jesus Christ was the Logos, or the logic of God, in John 1.1, 1, 1. and so if it's not logical, then it's anti-Christ. So this guy, St. Paul, a lot of the things he says aren't logical, like if when St. Paul says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ has risen from the dead, that you'll be saved, he's not really telling the truth. It's not going to save you. And that, that's a big problem with these Christians. You know, they think that they're saved and they're going to heaven and hallelujah. You know, it's like ignorance is bliss and you can believe fairy tales. Like, I, I don't even think that Jesus existed. It's like when I was going to college, I happened to read, the, my grandfather really liked these Will Durant, Will and Ariel Durant. Uh, it was like a 10 volume thing. You get it from the book club. If you join, they'll give you the whole set. And uh, so a lot of people had those in the houses. But like, 
I think it was the third volume was called Caesar and Christ. And the section about Christ in there, it starts off with, I think it was something that had to do with Napoleon. The first question that Napoleon asked, uh, I forgot who he asked, was whether he thought Jesus existed. And, and I thought, wow, you know, I, I never thought about that, you know. And when I was in college, it kind of... Uh, opened my eyes and, uh, you know, about whether Jesus existed. You know, what's the evidence that he existed? And there really isn't any. You know, you would think that this guy who could walk on water and could heal people and raise people from the dead would be world famous. And, you know, all the historians and everybody would write about him. But there weren't any, really. There, I mean, there, there's controversy over whether this guy named Josephus um, mentioned Jesus. Josephus mentioned a guy named Judas the Galilean, who was a revolutionary who was crucified around the time that Jesus lived. But it's uh, a lot of other people don't believe, you know, that Jesus really existed. And if Jesus did exist, he certainly didn't walk on water. And um, you know, that's like a metaphor. You know, Jesus was talking about your faith making you whole, and he's saying if you have faith. You know, you can walk on water, you know, you can move mountains, and, you know, you can raise the dead if you have faith, you know, and, well, I don't, you know, it's kind of metaphoric, I guess, but, you know, that you can be dead in spirit, and you can raise somebody's spirit, you know, if you have hope, you know, and enthusiasm, and like the word enthusiasm means to be God-filled or something like that, you look up the etymology for it. Oh, so anyway, back in 1985, I made all these little papers, and I was showing you this this one here, the look-see, and there I had the mark of the beast. I made these in 1985, so I've been at this for such a long time. And there's the etymology of devil, with Reagan being the devil. And it's one, two, three, and then the third thing here is the coup d'etat in Dallas. <clears throat> and then I put number four, where's Hoffa, which is a red herring, really. You know, there's a lot of red herrings out there that these people come up with, you know, it's like um, to distract you from the truth. But, like, if you look at, I thought the most important thing was uh, to show you who was on these committees. Uh, no, you know, the Warren Commission had um, Gerald Ford, who later became president, and then we, Alan Dulles was head of the CIA, Hale Boggs was kind of skeptical of the Warren Commission report, and he ended up being killed in a plane crash, and uh, I don't remember who these other people are, John J. McCloy was like a Wall Street lawyer, I think, but then in 1975 they had this Rockefeller Commission on CIA activities within the United States. And Ronald Reagan was on that, and Lyman Lemnitzer is this guy who came up with this Operation Northwoods that um, was kind of like a 9-11 thing, where they blamed, um, it's a false flag operation, and uh, there's a, another false flag operation that they don't tell you about in the history books, and it was like... Uh, this um, USS Liberty was during the Six Day War and uh, against Israel. There, the Israelis shot this. They shot this. There, this ship that was sailing over there. But uh, we'll get back to this Kennedy thing. So, the Rockefeller Commission report covered up this stuff about uh, these three tramps, and I have it on the back here. There's. One of the tramps that looks like E. Howard, uh, looks like Frank Sturgis. There it says Sturgis and Tramp B. I kind of, you know, this was supposed to be a study guide. And, you know, I passed these out at the university. And I'd have a sign with me that, like, uh, uh, Kennedy, uh, Nixon was in Dallas the day before the assassination. And this this is a picture with Don Kendall, who, who was head of the Pepsi um, bottling company down there. I don't know if he was the entire president, but uh, there's a lot of stories about Vietnam, you know, what the war was f started for. You know, they had heroin over there and the Golden Triangle, and and um, so and not only that, but, you know, they were 
starting to open up the markets there. And uh, like they wanted to sell Pepsi there and uh, in Vietnam and they wanted to sell Kentucky Fried Chicken over there. So it's just like the start of uh, when the United States boats made their way into Japan and and they we wanted to open up the markets back what was it in the 1900s and uh, so uh, you know we have to sell things that's what capitalism is all about it's like this growth you have to have this growth and this growth is like cancer and so like they don't want to tell you to stop having babies you know the more mouths to feed the more slaves they can get and uh, and so they you know they want to take away your health care <clears throat> and they don't want to have any health care through work and the pensions are going bankrupt and we've got all these problems that are all tied to money. And I was telling you how few people are actually producing anything. And the, like the farmers, there's only like a million farmers who grow all the food for us. And, uh, and then we've got a million farmers that uh, are in the cow industry you know almost all the corn that we grow is fed to pigs and cows and chickens and things like that and uh, it's become so unhealthy you know they have to sh give these animals all kinds of antibiotics and stuff so they don't get sick and and um, so people are eating this meat and getting sick and uh, you know they're overweight and uh, you know people have gotten so unhealthy and uh, so I'm, I'm really glad I quit smoking. Oh gosh, well I was telling you about the Kennedy assassination and this stupid guy Bill O'Reilly, I don't know how well this is going to show up because it's in blue, but this guy Bill O'Reilly wrote this book about the Kennedy assassination. How do we, let's see, ah. oh God, there it is. And uh, so, uh, you know, it's a big full page article uh, and this is in the New York Times and uh, it's it's not a good book you know I've read reviews about it and he's already written a couple other bestsellers about uh, Abraham Lincoln's death and one of the book reviews for this said that seven percent there was just a recent Gallup poll saying that seven percent of um, the people believe that uh, Lee Harvey Oswald was the one who killed Lincoln, you know, and so, like, um, they really trying to cover this up, you know, our, our America, we had a coup d'etat in America, and um, like I was saying, Gerald Ford was on the Warren Commission, and Ronald Reagan was on the Rockefeller Commission on uh, CIA activities in the United States, which covered up the photographs of E. Howard Hunt and Frank Sturgis that they found in Dealey Plaza, if you go to my website, you can see more about this Kennedy assassination. So I thought, you know, back in 75, you know, people would want to learn the truth and they'd want to know the truth. And so I was down at the university passing out all these papers and they kept arresting me and uh, throwing me in jail. And it's a long story. I don't have much time. But, you know, we, we just recently had this controversy here in Tucson about... Uh, this comic strip. It was like an anti-gay comic strip. And, uh, you know, we're talking about censorship at the University of Arizona Daily Wildcat. They, I tried to run this ad there once. I don't, I don't remember how long ago I did this. But uh, we have the, uh, I mentioned the Holocaust in there, and so they wouldn't run it. But anyway, you can find that on my website. And uh, they've always been trying to l suppress the truth, you know, this 9-11 thing. And uh, I was telling you about the uh, USS Liberty and, and also um, this Holocaust where they allegedly used diesel exhaust and louse disinfestant to exterminate six million people. The, the logistics just don't add up, you know, it takes so much coal and coke and stuff to burn all these bodies and they didn't have any requisition for this amount. You can calculate how many tons you need by um, they know how many how much kilocalories. Anyway, my name is Raquel Norris at Fire Style. Bye. God bless.